All right, welcome to this week's lap of the fish room. Let's take a look at what's going on in here and, uh, and then you can share your comments. Let me know what you think and what steps you think I should take, what fish you think I should add. Let's get it underway. Well, there's some good news and some bad news in today's update. And we'll get to it. This is the uh, side view of the 210 gallon South and Central American tank. I love the side, side view of an aquarium. Love the depth. But everyone in this, in this tank is doing fine. Big Oscars doing great. Still hanging out like buddies. Two chocolates seem to be weathering it okay. Nicaragua's looking very, very pretty. Funny how they get those little flecks and a couple spangles on the top of the body. I've noticed several fish get those. She's probably gonna hide in her cave when I get closer. Let's see. Come on, Salvini. Come on out here so we can see you. Beautiful fish. Loves that cave. The green tear is uh, looking good. From Brandon, the blind fish keeper. Check him out on YouTube. He sent me that fish when he was a little baby. Big gentle giant, probably pushing over 10 inches easily. Big vieja. Here's the Jack Dempsey. Female, from what I understand. I was told it's a female. I'm not an expert in uh, sexing South and Central American cichlids. So let's go over here to the uh, 300 gallon. This here fish here, the uh, Buchachromis rhodesii yellow. I was just about to pull him out and put him into another tank because he was harassing other fish after a water change. And that, that can happen sometimes after a water change. He was in particular going after my, my sand diver. And I was not gonna let him beat that sand diver up, so. I was just about to scoop him out with a net. Even went after him a couple times, but then he calmed down. In the meantime, there are two fish missing from this tank, and I'll get into that in a second. Little Lethronops oculatus, beautiful tangerine tiger. Great color on that fish. Here he is in the light. This Rhodesia yellow is a beautiful Buchachromis. Just a stud. Really has a lot of attitude. Nobody really messes with him. Even the uh, living stone eye leaves him alone. This Fusco, despite being pretty hefty, is turning out to be pretty pretty mellow. Same thing with this eye biter. Doesn't really want to get into it with other fish. Quingy's pretty peaceful. Quingy's are normally peaceful. Venusus is very mellow. Doesn't even doesn't act like a Venusus. Very yellow. Beautiful blaze on that fish. Let's see, who am I missing? The living stone, I built a giant pit in the uh, back right corner of the tank. You can see the way it slopes down over there. 
And just to give the um, just to give the sand diver an extra place to hide, I ended up adding a second plant here to the right side of the tank. And I stacked up some rocks. You'll notice there's, I usually have rocks on both sides of the tanks, on both sides of the tank. All the rocks now are on the right side. So I just kind of changed up the decor a little bit and uh, put an extra plant for extra cover. And, and then it all sort of calmed down See if I can get that trout over here. There he is. That's a spectacular fish right there. All the fish in this tank, of course, are from the cichlid shack over in Arizona. As are a lot of the other fish. I mean, a lot of the fish in the uh, in the 210, the Oscars, the uh, Nicaragua, the Vieja. I mean, almost. Almost all of these fish in here. I mean, I think I got the, I got the Salvini, the Salvini and the um, and the Jack Dempsey and the Firemouth were acquired locally. This Firemouth was from uh, Aquatic Critter. Green Terror, of course, was from Brandon. The Salvini was from uh, the Aquatic Critter. But the Nicaragua, it's a beautiful Nicaragua. And the Vieja, the two Oscars. Those are from the uh, Cichlid Shack. This Jack Dempsey, of course, the two chocolates also are from the Cichlid Shack. But this Jack Dempsey was from uh, was from Tom. He's the the fellow who used to own glass cages. He gave them to me as a gift when I went there to visit. Really cute little fish. All right, let's go over here. Check out my uh, little bed of tank. For some reason, this this guy here has been putting on a lot of um, a lot of color. I don't know why, but he's just been looking really, really good. Just a beautiful combination of colors. And this little Dumbo over here is really cute. Love the way that this type of uh, betta will move their fins. And it's funny, it's getting all flared up about something, but I don't know what. Just trying to stare me down. Here comes a face off. This tank gets very minimal work done to it. It has uh, almond leaves. It has some um, Anubias, pieces of bark, and uh, has some um, some Sprite, some floating Sprite up in the top back. And I found that the less I do with it, the better. It might get like a, maybe a 10%, 5% water change. But they seem to be happy. Here we have the live bears and they are, they are bearing. <laughs> they keep uh, making little Little fry and the fry are hiding up here in the Sprite usually. But they do come out and eat. And some of them you can see are pretty bold. Despite being the size of a period. Here comes one. But what do we have in here? We have a platies, some lyre tail mollies. And some guppies. There's also a uh, pleco, you can see him back there working in the corner. And a couple Cory cats, which are, there's one of them there. 
And there's another one hiding maybe inside the cave or underneath that, that bar in the back. That bar is that light bar that I did a review on. I think I called it a disco light. Didn't really like what it did with regards to lighting, but I do kind of like the bubbles. So I decided to leave that in. Apart from the Sprite, there's a little bit of live Anubius there on the, uh, on the wood in two places. So there's a little bit of Anubius in this tank as well. Here's my uh, bearded algae experiment. You can see one of the autos working, working on it as we speak. The leaves do look better. They do look better, but are they cleaned up? No, there's actually three autos on it right now. Three of the autos and the fourth auto is, is wandering around down here on his, uh, on his break. But it does seem like they're munching along the edges of the leaves. So they are, they are, they are working on it a little bit, but it's, it's not as clean as I would like. And so the next phase of the experiment is going to be starting shortly where I'm going to be adding some, some of those, uh, nearite snails and, and maybe some SAE, some of the Siamese algae eaters. I put a little bit of zucchini in here and the snails just go crazy over it. The, uh, and you know, they, they, the little autos, they like it too. Zucchini and also, I've also been putting some cucumber in there. All right, here's the 90 gallon. Silver dollars, they get some of those little spangles on the body, little bright spots that if we catch them in the right light, maybe from this angle here, you'll be able to see the little spangles on the top of the body. Little flecks of uh, reflection. I'm seeing more of a pattern in the face of the um, gold spotted severum. You can make out the pattern on them there. Like a little etching in the face area, very pretty. Up here's the red shoulder, that's a surprise. Usually the red shoulder hides when I'm filming. The geos are looking spectacular. They still go after each other occasionally, but not with the kind of viciousness they used to when they were younger. Look at the fins on them. There's my old uh, electric blue Okara. Truly an electric blue fish. There's an AC Hecali in here. There he is, right in front of me. Called an AC Hecali. They get these real pretty trailers, and if you can, if you if you look at the ends of his dorsal fin and the tips of the tail, he's got these little trailing threads. As a matter of fact, I think one of his names is Threadfin. You see the little red, little like little threads, and those get longer and longer as they, as they get older. AC Hecali. This tank is the one tank that's due for maintenance. The other tanks are all up to date. Here's the uh, the planted tank, and as you can see, the the, the blackbeard algae in this tank looks comparable or better than what I pulled out and have in there with the autos. That was uh, that was the worst of the plants that were in here. I'm using in the experiment, and I have heard that the black bearded algae does better in tanks where there's flow, in the areas of the tank where there's flow. So the other, the other uh, Anubius was right here. And so it got, you know, it got some of that black beard algae probably because it was getting the flow from the, from the filter, from that, from that hang on back. 
So ultimately what's gonna happen, apart from the phosphate pads and the water changes, I'm gonna put the autos in this tank and that might help a little bit, but eventually I'll put the Siamese algae eaters in here and maybe a few nerite snails. The other plants are like okay, they've got a little bit of, of it on it too, but so eventually, you know, eventually it'll dial in. But for my first ever real planted tank with a bunch of little community fish, I think it's doing okay. There are a couple uh, little plecos in here, uh, three quarries, 10 neons, about five or six rummy nose, five or six Buenos Aires tetras, five rasboras, some, some uh, lemons, about five lemon tetras, some red serpas, some cherry barbs. There's also a whiptail catfish hiding somewhere. So I mentioned there was a little bit of a bad news and that is what's going on here in this tank. Let me pull this hose out here. This is the part of the treatment where you're supposed to do a water change. I was doing a Furon, a Furon 2 uh, treatment on a um, Insignus who started to show a little bit of a bacterial, in bacterial infection, uh, possibly stemming from a bite from another fish. But Furon 2 is no longer available this is the Furon 2 that I had, I had a packet of it. Make it out there, some Furon 2, but you can't buy this anymore. Uh, I know they're tightening down on a lot of different kinds of antibiotics, but apparently now this is the, the substitute for it, the fin and body cure. So I've got two things going on in this tank. One is I've got the, uh, the Insignus back here who's getting treated and the water is actually a little bit green, a, a yellow green from the treatment. Let me add a little more light, that might help to see what's going on. But at any rate, there's an insignus back there and he's got some markings on the body that look like it may have started originally as, I thought it was a scrape, but then it was on both sides. And so I said, okay, this is turning into, this might be a, um, some type of a, of a bacterial infection. So I go ahead and pull, pulled him out and put him in here and in the meantime, uh, my autopharynx tetrastigma has pretty much reached sort of the end of life uh, where he's having trouble swimming and it's hard for him to eat. You know, he's been battling that one bad eye. And so it's not a, it's not a fun scene. I don't euthanize fish. I don't like euthanizing fish. So I've put him in here and, and he'll just live out whatever he has left in this tank. And I hate to see him go because he's just a, he's just been a great fish. But uh, at any rate, so this tank essentially is a hospital tank for the Insignus. And it's sort of uh, Shady, Shady Acres uh, hospice care for the uh, autopharynx tetrastigma. So that's a that's a look at the uh, at the fish room, the good and the bad. So that's the update. Any comments or questions, ideas, suggestions, share them below in the comments. You know, I, I try and get to as many as I can. I do appreciate it. I do learn a lot from you. So uh, let me know what you think. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell and uh, hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know something good's going on. And also commenting that actually creates excitement with YouTube when they see people engaging with the video. So be sure to comment. And that's it for me on this lap of the fish room. Thank you for uh, coming along with me.